Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk about XRP. I'm going to talk about a couple other things as well. And I'm going to play a video of Jamie Dimon at the end of this video that you're not going to want to miss. So Ripple confirming it changed the way it sells XRP only to accredited investors with licensed subsidiaries. Note the mention of sales outside the U.S. under different regulations. Note they make the case that their customers are not exposed to any profit loss via ODL so it shouldn't be a problem. But if it were, they've only worked with organizations worth more than $5 million, so accredited anyways. So that's who Ripple is selling XRP to, accredited investors that are going to utilize it for on-demand liquidity. And that fact came out in the Ripple vs. SEC case. Boom, Ripple is a member of the Digital Pound Foundation and a new stablecoin for the UK will also be announced by Ripple after the USD stablecoin launched on the XRP ledger. Now, I think once that USD backed Ripple stablecoin launches, all of a sudden we'll see a pound back Ripple stablecoin, a euro back Ripple stablecoin, other countries as well. I think it's going to be very exciting times ahead, is what I'm telling you. We're going to see a stablecoin in almost every country that Ripple is going to launch. It's just a matter of time. Then there's W3C. Ripple technology allows independent payment systems to communicate as easily as email systems do. All of the software is open source. No one owns Ripple, and there is no central operator. If Ripple's settlement process becomes part of the W3C's web payments protocol, payments will truly be effortless. Ripple supports any currency. Ripple is the world's first universal translator for money. You know, the internet initially was supposed to be just a passing fad. Now you carry the internet with you on your phone. But the internet is still lacking one thing a great payment system and it looks like ripple is going after that as well that is truly leading us to all the money ethereum validator ranks xrp investments safer than eth a german-based ethereum validator with x name crypto ea has given a higher safe surge rate to an xrp investment than eth so he's saying that XRP could soar by 21x. Now he thinks that ETH is only going to do a 4 to 5x. But he's saying this year we could see XRP at around $4.30. However, he says by 2025 we could see XRP at about $12. And I think he's being very conservative. In fact, the $12 price point goes in line with everybody else all over X. There's a lot of people say $10 to $12 or $10 to $13. Other people are always saying $27 plus. So we'll have to wait and see how it plays out. But I do believe if you invest in XRP over ETH, you're going to get more gains in the end. It's the same reason why I don't understand why people keep investing in Bitcoin. In this next run-up, what are you planning to get out of Bitcoin? Maybe a 3 to 5x? XRP can easily give you a 20x plus. Ripple will pay the fine to the SEC, but when will the case end? Jeremy Hogan gives us an idea. So I would say that based on what we've seen so far in the case, that the final judgment will come out this summer, I'm guessing July, maybe August. So he's saying July, maybe August. And, you know, that follows another timeline. Now, people said now that the Bitcoin halving has happened, that they expect a surge on these altcoins to happen in August. Now, imagine XRP 
already running up. Then all of a sudden, the Ripple SEC case comes to an end at the same time. That could be a very big catalyst. I think if that was to happen, we could see a $20 plus XRP in this next run-up, and that would be great, but that's just my opinion. So yes, the adoption of blockchain for banking is very much tied to the adoption of ISO 222. The industry must adopt ISO before it adopts blockchain for payments. Ripple and Stellar also cited as providing the speed scalability needed for bank transaction volumes. This comes from Smoke. So they're saying before banks can adopt blockchain, ISO has to take place. Credit, Agricole, Corporate, and Investment Bank and MUFG Bank completed the first payment in the ISO message format on the CHIPS network, the largest private sector high-value clearing and settlement system in the United States. That comes from Mr. Mann. So now that they're completing transactions, all of a sudden they're going to complete more and more and more transactions. And it's going to lead to adoption over time. And as those, once those transactions become the norm, all of a sudden we're going to see these ISO cryptocurrencies gain a lot of value from ISO. So many people are still downplaying ISO because we haven't seen value come from it yet. That value is still to come as well. CBDC, carbon credits, ESG, CBDC's link to carbon credits and ESG assets will intricately weave sustainability into the financial ecosystem while ushering innovation in digital currencies. And like I said multiple times, this was coming as well. It's the same reason that I said once Ripple started pushing towards carbon credits, they were leaning towards all the money. So you see, traditional financial ecosystem, currency and ESG asset exchanges. And then you see how it goes beyond that, corporate, retail users. And then you see the banks and financial inst institutions. So carbon credits are going to be part of the new financial system, is what I'm saying. And that's going to become a very big market over time. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand has launched a public consultation on the design of a potential CBDC called Digital Cash. This digital cash would be an electronic version of physical cash issued by the central bank and available to the public, but would not replace physical cash. Now, they don't mention Ripple in this article, but what I wanted to point out here is, so they're launching a CBDC and they say it's not going to replace physical cash, but it definitely will over time. It's like I always told you, once we get a CBDC, it's going to run parallel with fiat. You're still going to have pay paper money, but they're going to keep giving you incentives to start using the CBDC over the cash. And before you know it, cash will disappear. And this is coming to every single country around the world. Now take a listen to the Fed. The Fed could delegate settlement to a third party like Ripple. That is, people say, how can you trust you know, the Fed to do the bookkeeping? I mean, I mean like I said, my response is, well, you don't expect the Fed to kind of steal your money. I mean, if the Fed, the Fed can print all the money at once, it's not going to like mess around <laughs> with your bookkeeping. So, you know, we have this, this big uh, spreadsheet, you know, the, the blockchain if you want, but it's just managed by the Fed. And it's very cheap, much cheaper than Bitcoin, uh, if you're willing to delegate the responsibility to a, a, a third party. Um, and, and, but then the, the downsides to all of that, of course, is, is uh, you know, some, you know, you'd actually, suppose you, you didn't want the Fed to be uh, uh, responsible for processing the payments. I mean, suppose, you know, the, the Fed will likely impose some KYC restrictions on, on some purchases. They might not process some purchases that you might want to undertake. Um, and so, it was at that point that I said, well, you know, we could, if we wanted to, extend the concept one step further. Uh, I'm not saying that this is ever going to happen, but just conceptually, you could imagine uh, not Fed wire for all, but kind of like a Fed coin, where what the Fed would do is actually just issue these uh, 
you know, Bitcoin-like objects, but um, and, and they would enforce a, a, a par exchange rate with the U.S. dollar, that would eliminate the exchange rate volatility. Uh, but they could delegate the, the clearing of these payments to some third party, you know, some sort of Ripple-like protocol or, or possibly uh, a bit, even Bitcoin. I mean, we could delegate the responsibility of process. Take notice, he said Ripple-like protocol. And I think what he was talking about when he was saying a Fed coin, he's talking about a CBDC. So they want to use their CBDC, but have Ripple do the settlement part because the settlement has always been a problem, even for SWIFT. But we'll see how that goes into the future as well. But you see the Fed, how they're already thinking in that direction. Tether will not be covered under MECA regulations. Tether's market share is expected to be overtaken by USDC. And even S&P Global states that USDT has several stability weaknesses as described below. Tether will go poof eventually. Facts are facts, 100%. People keep arguing like Tether is going to be with us as time goes on. But you could take a listen to Congress talk about, the Fe about USDT. Take a listen. Just last week, the Wall Street Journal reported how Russian smugglers used the stablecoin Tether to evade sanctions on Russia's war machine. Tether is a, quote, key step in the chain, unquote, of illicit transactions, one smuggler said. North Korea has hacked, stolen, laundered hundreds of millions of dollars in crypto, a strategy to avoid sanctions. And these, all these bad actors, North Korea, Russia, terrorist groups like Hamas, aren't turning to crypto because they've seen the ads and bought the hype. They're using it because they know it's a workaround. They know it's easier to move money in the shadows without safeguards like know your customer rules or suspicious transaction reporting. These common sense protections help identify illicit money and keep it out of our financial system. We must make sure that crypto platforms play by the same rules as other financial institutions. We need to make sure we have the tools crack to crack down on illicit finance with digital assets just as we would with any other asset. Many, including the Deputy Secretary, have pointed out possible gaps in illicit finance authorities over dig digital assets. It's time we work together to close these loopholes and protect our national security. In addition, we've seen Russia increasingly turn to alternative payment mechanisms, including the stable coin Tether, to try to circumvent our sanctions and continue to finance its war machine. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member, you both mentioned fentanyl, which is killing too many Americans around this country. What we know to be true is that these drug cartels are increasingly looking for ways to move money that are outside the traditional financial system. So they already know how Tether is being used. And that first guy, you could hear him talk about exchanges. And I think they want to crack down on the exchanges first, the on-off ramps. And they're going to continue to do that as time goes on, goes on. But they're also going to crack down on Tether. I think we are seeing the beginning to, uh, of the end of Tether. Same things going on in the EU right now with Mika. Tether cannot be used under Mika regulations. And I think the U.S. is just going to simply put Mika-like regulations in place over the coming months. But, you know, once Tether goes, it's taking Bitcoin with it. And people could deny it all day long. But that's what's going to happen. This stock literally screams everything deep researchers have been trying to tell you. These wars are all planned to usher in digital economy. They want to tr track control and monitor all our transactions. They will build these new systems on pre-existing private blockchains. And you could see how they're already talking about it uh, after Gaza. And they're talking about implementing digital this and digital that. Because we are in the digital age. We are headed towards digital transactions, digital money, digital trade. Everything is going in that direction. And honestly, the wars that are breaking out right now, they are meant to keep the normal people, the people outside of crypto, distract it while all this gets put in place and it's getting put in place behind the scenes now i'm gonna place a video of jamie diamond now this 
looks. This is, looks the same as Jamie Dimon looked the day they were talking about Basil III. What he's telling you is, I've been in control for years now, and all of a sudden, control is slipping away from me. Things are changing fast. Take a listen. World order after after you know, World War II, Bretton Woods, WTO, trade, UN, etc., is kind of being challenged. And if this doesn't go the right way, you can easily see a world that kind of goes more to a little bit of chaos as people realign allies, relationships, etc. I'm a little surprised that things haven't gone worse for oil and gas. You know, people flying drones and satellites and blowing up Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2. It doesn't take a lot to send oil and gas prices back to 120 or higher. If that happens, it's bad for the climate, you know, all the climate folks, because everyone turns back on their coal plants, poor nations and rich nations, but it's terrible for poor countries. As you know, a lot of these countries are kind of struggling a little bit already, and so, you know, we have a dangerous situa situation here. What's actually going on is the new financial system is allowing everyone a level playing field. It's giving everyone a level playing field, allowing them to compete, allowing them to have a bank account. And Jamie Dimon doesn't like it. He's been controlling every situation for years now. And all of a sudden, we're going to have full transparency as we go into the future. There's no more playing games behind the scenes. There's no more big banks paying off politicians because that transaction would be recorded as well. Things are changing fast and people like Jamie Dimon are going to get left behind. That's what it comes down to. But you know, until it all happens, you got to stay patient, stay positive. Let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.